You have a very um, soft voice. It is an incredibly soft voice, no doubt about that. That's why these, these are ASMR. you just got to kind of <laughs> on the microphone a little bit sometimes for me. Okay, before we get into it, I want to point something out because people are going to be a little weird. I just so happen to be wearing the same shirt that I wore last episode, but we haven't recorded in probably a month. Yeah. Um, so I do change my clothes. I was probably wearing this jacket. I very well could have been wearing this shirt too. There was a, a, a big chunk of the podcast where you had worn your same, your favorite gray jacket like <laughs> 10 episodes in a row. I haven't worn that for a while because it's just been in that closet. I forgot about it. Yeah, I love that jacket. As soon as I broke it, I went online and bought a replacement. Exactly the same. <laughs> one for one the same. I love that thing. I don't know if there's anything that I have that's like that where I had bought the same thing again. Immediately afterwards. I guess socks. Do those count? Yeah. I did it like back when I was in high school. That's how I used Converse. I'd, you, I'd wear them out, then I'd immediately turn around and go buy a brand new pair. Of the exact same one? Like I mean, same color sometimes I changed color, but there was a couple times I went back-to-back -back colors. Um... This is Talking Rad. Welcome. Episode 193 of CSX. I mean, Talking Rad. We're almost episode 200. Yeah, and we're doing it. Just a few more years because we've been, you know, doing like an episode every six months. <laughs> oh, I guess I could have turned the little camera thingy around so we could see it. But like, Sky, you got that red light. If it goes off, let us know. I don't think it will. <laughs> um, so... I, I just I just had this like weird realization today. Um, recently, I've been I wouldn't say addicted to because I don't get them all of the time. But recently, I've been excited about a new drink store where I get drinks. Skylar knows very well about this. Um, the drink I typically go for is a champagne Mountain Dew flavor, and it's effing delicious. But that's not what I'm trying to talk about right now because. It's just kind of like the segue into this other thing. So the champagne flavor slash smell is what I'm getting on. In in our bathroom, I have my soap um, from Bath and Body Works called Champagne Toast. For some reason, dumb coal brain was activated for probably over a year and a half at this point. No, just a year. Just a year at this point. Basically, since I bought this, this flavor of soap. Um... And I've always just been like, champagne toast. I guess you could have toast with champagne. <laughs> this guy thing. Yes. It literally wasn't until moments ago when I just got to use in the bathroom and washed my hands and went champagne. Oh, toast. Uh, I have a similar, uh, similar yet adjacent story of like my brain could only think of one word like even though the word had multiple meanings and I cheated this was back in third grade I still remember this because I felt so guilty because I got a hundred on this test it was a spelling test where it was the word by but you it spelled was like, the by yeah it was buy like you're supposed oh, you're buy buying something, something but I I spelled that bye like goodbye goodbye all I could ever think of was goodbye and then I, what I did is I walked up to, you know how they had like the paper trays that the teacher, like you could, dude, everyone did that. <laughs> I walked I up, promise you. <laughs> I walked up and I saw that there was a gamer that spelled it correctly. I was like, oh, dummy. And like, <laughs> I did the whole, I forgot to put my name on it. So I went back to my desk, changed my answer. <laughs> my name was already on there. Come on. Dude, how many people just brought their pencil with them? Probably a lot of them. I think I've done that once, at least. I brought my pencil with me. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. This is what I did. I'm almost positive I did this. I brought my pencil with me, and uh, I probably tried to play it off because I forgot my name, but I brought my pencil with me, and I left the answer that I needed to answer blank. blank. Yep. Mm. So I walked up there ready just to cheat right on the person. <laughs> like, All right. Got it. Yeah, my <laughs> name's on there now. Promise. Yeah. Wow. Well. Yeah, I definitely cheated. Uh, I felt really actually, guilty. Actually, there's funny connection. Um, so in recent events... Uh, oh, Thane, can huh? I pause for half a what? second? Um, um, this is just the way you speak. I'd like you to put your mouth closer to the, the microphone. Like this? Well, okay, so you can see, look at their waveform. So when you're just talking, you're kind of like this. Like, see how my waveform's so yeah. little right now? But yeah. now that I'm closer, it's much larger. Yeah. 
just try to be more conscious of that because it really makes the audio levels funky. I'm cutting this out. You have a very. You're gonna cut this out. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I want everybody to hear about the high in the scenes though. You have a very um soft voice. It is an incredibly soft voice, no doubt about that. That's why these, these are ASMR. you just got to kind of <laughs> on the microphone a little bit sometimes for me. Slurp it. So, uh, so, so, um, speaking of misspellings, <laughs> uh, in recent events, um, the eclipse happened, and I hear I hear about this thing called CERN. I was like, CERN? Yo, CERN? Like Steins Gate? CERN? The Large Hadron like, Collider? Yeah. I thought CERN, like Steins Gate, <laughs> but it's like, no, that's S-E-R-N. This is C-E-R-N. And I thought everyone complaining about CERN was like, wait, are we, are they like trying to, is this like is some conspiracy? Are they trying to kill people for t- for time travel? <laughs> um, That CERN is based off of that CERN. Yeah. Is like, that's really? what I thought. Oh, yeah. yeah. They, it's like, oh, it's they have the Large Hadron Collider as well. Like, it's a real thing. That's where they ripped in, it off from. And in other, many black holes are real. In Dang. other... Uh, are you joking? I'm not joking. Okay, okay. I'm this, just making this sure. This is a real cold moment, okay? okay, okay. I in, wouldn't joke about Stein's gay, okay? In, <laughs> in, in other visual novels in that universe, CERN is like the antagonist. CERN's bad guys for yeah. some reason. IRL, they're chill, I think. I watched a, uh, it was like the the CERN opening ceremony. It was like weird, interpretive, f- dancey, freaky <laughs> stuff. Let's go, let's go. <laughs> it was so weird. I sent it to Jordan and I was like, hey, what do you think of this? He's like, I mean, when I was in college, they had interpretive dance classes and they were kind of freaky like this. And I'm like, oh, okay, so <laughs> this must be a normal thing then. Oh, man. <laughs> But anytime I think of interpretive dancing, I think of that one dude that had like he he has like uh, canes and then he's got a big rod yeah. on his wiener and he's just smacking the yeah. bar. <laughs> that was like a performance art thing. I Yo, I saw this thing from Coachella literally yesterday. This guy pulls out his wiener and starts playing the piano with it. It was a dildo, but it looked like he was pulling out his wiener. And that actually happened at Coachella. Yeah, real thing. <laughs> a Coachella it showed up on my Reddit feed. Yeah, all, I, Reddit. Yeah, all I know is I saw a video of like people saying like it was a scam with the Hatsune Miku tour thing that it was only an LCD screen. And they wanted the hologram? Yeah, they wanted the hologram. I mean, let's be honest. <laughs> Whether it's the hologram or a screen, it's still fake. Yeah. Okay, okay. Let's talk about this. This is this is a good subject. Mind you, I, I'm a gamer that I don't know anything about Hatsune Miku, so I have no stake in the matter. Yeah, you, when you came in says, I don't give a shit about Hatsune Miku. <laughs> so... Let me. I'll, I'll start this conversation explaining to you what Hatsune Miku is so that you can understand it. Hatsune Miku is essentially, in its base form, is a program that you can purchase that will, once you feed it um, lyrics and songs, and like, you know, the beeps and the boops, it'll play those beeps and boops in her voice, for example. Yeah. And it's literally a computer program that you can purchase, probably apply it to one of those audio mixing program things or something i don't exactly know that but yeah, i know that like it's a program anybody can hatsune miku anybody yeah. can hatsune miku it's free even well, alex was hatsune miku not I saw free it. but yeah, you had like to buy a, the program yeah how and much then, is the program do you know 60 bucks i don't know so oh, okay. it's not expensive at all but anybody can make hatsune miku songs that's why you'll see a bunch of people on youtube that this song featuring hatsune miku because they can just use that name because they can. It's not a big issue at all. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that's that's the gist of what Hatsune Miku is. So there's tons of artists that have gotten very popular. Yeah, like Yasobi, Deco27. Uh, De- I know. De- I actually yeah. know Deco27. Yeah. You don't know Yasobi? They're the Oshinoko yeah. opening guys. Yeah. Okay. Before the one of the producer guy before he hired the singer when they became Yasobi, he was doing Vocaloid yeah. stuff. Yeah. And yeah, so Hatsune Miku is not the only Vocaloid. There's plenty of them. She's the most well-known one. But yeah, like Deco 27, they did a Pokemon song with Hatsune yeah. Miku um, as this big Hatsune Miku collab that they're doing. So is there a actual person behind Hatsune Miku? Like when she goes on tour, uh, like what we no, just saw? I don't just think com- so. I think just the Krypton company. That the makes company it, that yeah. distributes the software so does probably. Does she have like yeah. original music? Yes. That she tours with. Yes. So there is a Hatsune, the no, Hatsune Miku. No. No. 
there isn't. It's still the there's Vocaloid a, there's thing. There's a voice actress they based her say, sure, size, yeah. her voice off, kind of like what they did with Siri with that one. So lady. it's not like the gorillas. There's not a persona behind Hatsune. No, no. Not really. So what happens is when they go on tour and they have these, they have the okay. Let's start with the original songs. Then when he just makes the song, gives it to Hatsune Miku or the company that distributes Hatsune Miku stuff. And then that is hers now. So all these people making songs featuring Hatsune Miku, they're a little bit different because they're not owned by Hatsune Miku. They're their own thing. Okay. But so, and that's, and this company probably hires out people to make songs for Hatsune Miku. And that's kind of mm-hmm. how that shows up. But when they go on tour, they p- uh, pull up a hologram, which is pretty dang cool in all yeah, reality, I've seen which the is hologram. sick. And then they have the hologram dance around to like, essentially you're making a music video, but IRL is essentially what it is. And then they have the music playing in the background. So that's what you're going to a tour. Sometimes with live instruments, there'll be people down there playing. Sometimes with people live. do play. Yeah. And they just have the Vocaloid like AI audio thing. It's not even AI. Yeah, like this it's not Coachella, AI. They did have actual musicians. It's literally, they're feeding, like I said, the lyrics and the song to the program. And the program is spitting them out like a printer. Yeah. And they're, and that, yeah. So it's not AI by no, any means. You have to tune it. Correct. Okay. And so that's how you can do like live music, like they said and stuff. So let's talk about this. Now that we've gone through Hatsune Miku 101, we can now discuss this. I want to preface this conversation by saying that I, I think Hatsune Miku's fine. I like a lot of the songs. I've heard a handful of them, especially because of the Pokemon collab. I think some of them are bangers. I've been listening to one on repeat because I like it so much. Um, as for going to see Hatsune Miku in concert, that's where I'm a little iffy on. Because I don't feel right about paying money to go watch something that isn't actually there. I'm even more detached from it, knowing now that it's not even. There's nobody behind Hatsune Miku. That it's literally just a computer program. Or like just, the only thing behind is just the community of people who make it. Yeah. Yeah. See, I'm even more yeah. detached because it's like, wh- who are you going to see? Like we've got Hatsune Miku at home. <laughs> exactly. I guess if yeah. you <laughs> if you want to see the cool yeah. projector, like yeah. that's really freaking dope. really cool, and it's probably even cooler in person. No doubt, and I'm sure it is. But, like, that's all you're seeing. So if that's what people paid for, though, and that's why they're mad at Coachella, did they advertise? Not just Coachella. Like, the the whole um, – this whole tour that was not made by Krypton and Crunchyroll. Oh, and they're just not yeah. doing the hologram at Krypton all. Krypton Future Media is the people. They're just throwing it. a TV on there. Yeah, they throw a TV up there. And years prior, it's always been the hologram. And, like, while the hologram is a nice step up – I don't really see the disconnect yeah. personally. I feel like watching on the TV screen, watching on the hologram, I think it's the same experience in yeah. the long run. But the, see, the thing with the hologram has had like the full 360. Is yeah, like a 3D it's sick thing? AF. It's incredibly yeah. cool. Well, I just don't think that, that changes much because you know that it's not a real thing. You yeah. know it's not a hologram like Cortana is that can just jump yeah. around places. Yeah, It's literally they're stuck here. And so instead of just being stuck here, they're stuck on a TV instead. I don't see, you know what I'm talking about now. But like I said, it's fun. I enjoy going to concerts myself. I like to watch bands. I think it's fun to see them play. But that's why I don't know about Hatsune Miku. Because you're not watching Hatsune Miku play. You're watching these other people play the instruments while a, a YouTube video is more or less playing a song. And like... Obviously, this is just like crushing so many Hatsune Miku fans out there. They are <laughs> yeah. foaming at the mouth to get up my neck and just rip out my entire entrails and all that stuff. And I get it. I don't. I'm sorry. I'm bashing the thing you like. I love things you can bash. Please do so in the comments. We love engagement. Yeah, you, um, <laughs> yeah, Yu-Gi-Oh. Uh, I love Yu-Gi-Oh. It's a terrible game. Don't yeah. play it, but bash it in the comments. Thank you. Um, yeah. And so that's my thoughts on it. I, I don't know. I'm with you. Like I'm, like I said, learning about it now, I'm even more detached because I remember when I first got into the Gorillas. I'm like, this is really dope. And then I looked at one of their live shows, and it's like, it, it's cartoon guys playing on a TV. Yeah. You go to Skrillex, you just see a guy behind a desk, essentially, yeah. and yeah. it doesn't even have to be him. It doesn't have to be him because he's got a helmet on. It's called Marshmallow. <laughs> that, I think that's Dead Mouse. I don't think Skrillex wears a helmet. Oh. Marshmallow. Yeah, dead I, was mouse, dead mouse. I was thinking oh, dead, dead mouse. I was thinking dead mouse. Oh, my bad. Marshmallow is even skrillex. worse. Like, you need, like, 
you it's probably not even the original guy they started with it was it's probably just some random guy every time yeah could be yeah i think the closest relation to from a vocaloid that we can make is with a vtuber yeah but vtubers actually have a person behind right, them exactly. like exactly who you're getting at yeah. yes and so i would be much more inclined to go meet meet a vtuber than i would be to ever meet hatsune miku because Hatsune Miku is not a thing. Yeah. She's literally like... She's like an idea. Not she's a, an, not a she's person. She's yeah. a literal Chizuru. She's yeah. a freaking master chief. You know, they're not real. Whereas a VTuber is a real person. That's just a persona. But that's the same thing. You go see Robin Williams. He's not Mrs. Doubtfire. He's just Robin Williams, you know? Yeah. You don't see Will Smith as the Hitchcock. I, I robot guy. I robot guy. Hancock. You see... <laughs> Yeah, Hancock, excuse me. I was thinking Hitch and then Hancock smashed together, Kevin James style. And, um, my bad. Um, you get what I'm saying, though. You don't see their character. You see them. Mm -hmm. And that's the same thing yeah. with a VTuber, in my opinion. Granted, you will probably, if you do see a VTuber, you're, they're probably being their persona. And they're probably not even going to be in person. But I'm, I think some of them do that. Some of them probably do IRL yeah. meetups, so. I still like that more than Hatsune Miku. Totally. That's exactly where I'm going for, yeah. So, like, when, when these fans, are they a fan of the singer? Are they a fan of the music itself? Or are they a fan of the character Hatsune Miku? I would assume character as someone who doesn't know anything. I would just assume character from outside looking in. What do you think, Thane? Uh, character, uh, like, yeah, I guess a character. You can associate a character to it. I personally but. would feel ripped off if I went to a concert like that. Even with the holograms, I would yeah, too. Yeah, yeah, same. It's just like... I, but but that's what they advertise. That's what you're going for. It's like, oh, hey, it's going to be a hologram. Oh, yeah. These yeah. people that are going, they know what they're yeah. getting. Yeah. And that's and that's where it's just a don't yuck anybody's yums yeah. moment. Like, people like what they like, and yeah. that's completely fine. Well, I mean, but, I pay money to play basketball, and I know dude, a lot of people would be like, I play, that's such a waste of money. I pay money to open up packs of cardboard just to throw them in the garbage two seconds later. So I literally throw away money. <laughs> We so like do. I get it. Yeah. I get I understand throwing away money. So like like I said. So the crux the crux of the uh L C D versus hologram thing is that someone on Reddit said, Hey hey, do you think I made a petition to get a full refund for the uh the tour they had because they um they did not tell us that it was just gonna be an L C D screen, not the Did they hologram. advertise hologram for this tour? I don't. I'd have to look into that. If but, they advertised yeah. hologram, then I think they'd have a case. Yeah. If they didn't advertise hologram or didn't advertise anything, yeah. then I don't think they have a case at all. Yeah. Um, and some people say, "Oh, this should be a class action lawsuit." And someone did try to file a lawsuit. I don't know how far it's going to go. So I don't know the legality. I don't. I don't know the advertisement. But there is one thing where people report and say, "Hey, these. V oh yeah, the VIP tickets that I bought." They didn't even do what they were supposed to do. And I'm pretty sure you can sue them for that or get a refund. Because you're supposed to get in like an hour early and they didn't, couldn't even get that. Oh. So the V like if the VIP people paid extra money for that is getting screwed over, that's where I have a problem. The other stuff, I don't know. If they have a case, then yeah. But at that point though, is that the venue's fault or is that the team behind Hatsune Miku's tour? Like there's a lot more yeah. Than just bitching about True. not getting it's what you want. The, apparently, the entire tour just had the LCD screen. Um, here's a thought: What if, like, and this is kind of like deviating a little bit, along with LCD screen? What if they, like, you could download an app that would upload <laughs> the Hatsune Miku onto your phone that mirrors what's on the LCD screen, so everybody can have her up on their phone? That'd be kind of cool. I guess that'd yeah. be one step up, but right? That's still, like, that reminds me of the dumb. I still think it's dumb. That reminds but me I think of the. It's a step. That reminds me of the Domino's app that they had. In yeah, Japan dude, let's get freaking that one guy. Yeah, what's his name? I don't know. Yeah, I don't remember. Shout out to Nick Robinson. I learned about. I learned all about that. It's a fun saga if you've not seen that Nick Robinson series, the Domino's Pizza Hatsune Miku stuff. Yeah, it's like a four part video, dude. It's fun. Um. Anyway, good stuff. I was going to segue to something, but then I remembered I don't have anything to talk about. <laughs> um, they, do you have something? I guess I could bring back something. And recently I've been modding my consoles, some of them, and I've been thinking of jailbreaking my PS3. And that's because I agree with people, including Munuhar, what they say. If you buy a piece of hardware, you should you have the right to do whatever you want with it. 
I've seen plenty of videos yeah. of people smashing their Xbox 360s. True. Yeah, they could do that. I mean, Smash it's a waste my of money. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but like, I think yeah, if you want to put homebrewed software on there, you should do it. I don't think you're, the company should be mad. Yeah, they could be mad. People make it, but it's not illegal, yeah, right? Because you're not. It's not illegal. Anything. You're just modifying something you own. Yeah. You're not modifying online gameplay. You're not modifying the... There's there's one thing that I think they could get you on is the, a lot of these homebrews modify the actual operating system that yeah. you're on and you do not have the right to to modify operating systems that Nintendo or Sony has made. Yeah. Um. So, yes. Um. All the... All the mods and all the homebrew jailbreaking stuff, I have not modified the uh, OS at all. No, 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 no. Yeah, you like, haven't, oh, yeah. but the people that made these mods that you can yeah. put on there probably have, and that's yeah. where it would be a legal thing. That said, I don't think that even matters. Let's be mm-hmm. real. Let's be completely frank. We all know why people want to mod systems. 100% of the time, they're doing it so they can play these games for free. Yep. I did. Well, I did it because there's no legal way to get them anymore. Nintendo shut down everything. Sure. Sure, sure, sure. And but what I, about the remasters? Like, if they have remasters, I but there are a few yeah. games, slant few games that I can't play anymore. So I, I did it for those few games. I completely agree with you, and I think yeah. you're a great person, Thane. The world is not great people. I know, I know. <laughs> like, I don't care about the world. Like, I just, I just, it's a selfish desire of myself. Like, yeah. Well, they, I don't even think it's selfish. Yeah. It's selfish. If you can't get them, that's just a. Yeah, that's, that's like a Nintendo. You're doing what you can at that Yeah. Point. And, of course, being Nintendo and or any company, they have not said that, oh, we'll bring these back in a later date. They they can just remain silent and people will just mod their mod your console. There's no support for it left. Yeah. So, yeah, like, I think that, yeah, you should, I think you should totally be able to mod your console if you want. They, companies get, get mad. <laughs> I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to play devil's advocate and also a little about what I actually believe and think about this subject. Um I agree that yeah, you should be able to mod your stuff. Um uh, when it comes to actually just downloading ROMs and putting them onto your system, that's the gray area that I don't know if I can get on board with completely. I mean, I know like I know it's not morally right. I just do it because it's there. If it's a game that you already own, I feel like it's yeah. okay. Yeah, and the, like all these consoles they have you can dump the CD. Like I tried to dump Xenoblade, but my storage was too small. Also, it's like the biggest game on there. So, yeah. would could you ever foresee companies selling ROMs like Nintendo selling their ROMs? Well, well, it's, no. Well, it's called um, the Wii sh- the eShop. Sure, they, they, right. They, they would they would always one hundred percent time make players for you to play these ROMs off. Yeah, like the eShop or the or little, the, the little NES yeah, Mini. Yeah. See, and my whole thoughts on this too, and this also partially comes from just talking about it with Cole, is I have spoken many times about how much I love Xbox Game Pass. And how much I'm a big fan of these subscription services because they put so many games on there and you're only paying like 15 to 20 bucks a month to play all of these games, brand new games, old games, games that are almost up unobtainable at this point because they're so old. Um, so I see companies like Nintendo obviously getting on board with that because they've started Nintendo Switch Online, like that subscription service. And here's the thing, though, is a lot of people are like, yeah, but what about the old games that no one cares about? You just answered it yourself. Exactly. That no one cares about. No one about. cares about. No one's going to get uh, seven hot games on the Wii that you can play with your friends and family. Like, that's never going to Nintendo Switch Online because nobody cares about that yeah. game. Boom Blocks. Nobody cares about Boom Blocks that, but me. That Nerf game where it's like a, a light gun Nerf game. Nobody's, yeah. Nobody yeah. wants to play that one. No. <laughs> Games more in high demand are usually going to be ported. Correct. And that goes back to what Cole was talking about with remasters. Then there's a slant few that aren't. Like some Pokemon games still stuck on their consoles, but most of them have been ported. Um, yeah. No, that's not entirely true. Uh, Everything 3DS and before yeah. is not playable. Oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah, so... If you want those ones, you can mod your console to get those games. And also Fire Emblem. Well, ho- hold yeah. on. Hold on. I still don't agree with it. I, yeah. I've, I've, the older I've gotten, the more I've been against the idea of it. Just because, like, 
it just it just doesn't feel right in my mind. I, I guess I don't know the and morals here's my, of it. And here's my morality on it: they've already made their money and they're not selling anymore. I say screw them. I'll take them. I'm gonna take them because, like, if you're not offering it, then I'll take it. Some I'll get it somewhere else. But like most people Moralities don't think that way, though. Most people think, oh, they were they were releasing this thing that that I couldn't get prior. And I'm still just going to play the free version that I stole from them. Yeah, some people will do that. No, yeah. most people most, will most do people. that. That's the issue. I mean, I would do it too. And, well, unless I'm I'm already paying for the, so those subscription services, so maybe not. But if you want to play Little Samson, it, you're not playing Little Samson without getting an emulator. Correct. Yeah. Unless you're wanting to pay $1,500. And I agree with that. And I honestly agree with emulating Pokemon games for the most part. Just because, like, they're ridiculously priced. Do you want right, to play yeah. Pokemon Black right now? You're going to be shelling out $100 for that game, mm -hmm. which is a complete joke. And you still might get, you might get a freaking pirated copy, too. You might get a pirated copy if you're not careful. And it's a joke. It's an absolute joke. And I don't know the solution other than pirating. Unless yeah. Nintendo releases some way to play these games, which probably won't ever happen. And really, when it comes to these older games, I'm far more lenient on. It's when we get to the modern, current yeah, gen games like that to, people do that if stuff. If there's games readily available, I usually like to pay for them. Like Stellar Blade, a game coming out. Tears of gonna, the Kingdom. Tears of the Kingdom. If I'm like, if it comes out, I'm not gonna pirate it because, like, right now it's too risky. Like. Whoa, hold on. Yeah. You just put a word out there in a second for a second like, there. It's too risky or it's not morally correct. Yeah. Well, here's the thing. It's too risky to, if it was convenient to pirate it, then oh boy. But no. Well also because, you know, like if it comes out fresh, it's like I might as well support the developers. Like, yeah. And I I'm kind of with Cole yeah. on this one too, though. Like the, the modern new stuff, like don't pirate it. They they're making it as easily available. I mean, it's just a paywall at that point. Yeah. If you want to play, if you want to play something, like Thane just mentioned, you're also supporting the developers too. Um, mm -hmm. I I think older stuff that's a little bit harder to obtain to play. Yeah. I'm fine with that. I have never downloaded a like modern gen emulator. Um, and with like the Nintendo Switch one getting shut down, everybody's freaking out about that. Like. I don't know. See, dude. that's the discussion right there. Yeah. That's what we're leading towards. Let's be sure, real. Yeah. We're going to talk about the Nintendo Switch emulator that what got shut down. Yeah. Also, and the hard truth is that you need to be like there's a short window where these games can be profitable. Like with at, when that window's up, like what's this short yeah. window? Define this window to me. I think like, GTA 5, <laughs> 10 years. Yeah, exactly. I don't think there is a window. If they're selling it in stores, then that's the window. Yeah. If you can buy it brand new even, that's still within the window. You can buy brand new PlayStation 2 games right now on Amazon if you look. I guess the window would be when they stop selling it. Which and may never happen for a lot of these. Especially yes. with digital games. Like Correct. What's, what's the point at that well, point? Why one ever games, take it off Well, of there the was shop? one game that not only stopped being profitable, is that they took it off because it stopped being profitable because due to copyright music and that's spec ops the line in fact i che i checked it's no no no, no. it's library because it's not that it's not profitable it's yeah. that the music license ran up yeah the music license ran up and then 2k they're like oh we're not making money off this game why renew the music license just take it down well what totally the, yeah that's well, that's what happens totally like and but it's not completely that it wasn't being profitable yeah. it was profitable at one point no it was never profitable it bombed the game bombed. I'm sure they may. I'm sure they yeah. eventually evened out. No, they never did. You sure? Yes, I'm sure. Okay. Well, they're dumb. Yeah. I still, I still disagree though that just because the music license ran up is I, like also it's, it's acceptable to take your game down yeah. if the music license run run down. It doesn't like you don't. You're not required to renew the license and pay all that money again just to keep your game up. I think that's yeah. silly. That. People get mad at that. It's just something yeah. you have to expect to happen if there's licensed music in a game. Also expect, like, if I didn't have a copy, like, expect me to, like, pirate it. Sure. I don't want to pay sure, $100 sure, sure. for a used copy. No doubt, Those yeah. Used copies spiked up in sales. I, I agree with that as yeah. well. That goes back to being old games in general, though. Let's loop into this modern thing, though, with the Switch, the Switch emulator. Yeah. So, as it stands, emulating what a console can do is not illegal. 
But what you do and choose to do with these emulators can be illegal. Yeah. And that's the issue with them. And these people that made this Switch emulator... They also made the, the uh, 3DS, the 3DS emulator, emulator, emulator called Citrus. They... Uh, they made this emulator and then essentially made a Patreon that you had to pay five dollars uh-huh. a month to get into, which explained how to get games. Uh-huh. And they and people the way, wonder why that by the, by they the got way, trouble. By the way, you don't have to go to a Patreon to get games. There's a subreddit for free. You join for sure, free. Sure, sure. You how to get all the games. Sure, but I'm just you saying. You don't have to join a freaking Patreon to. I mean, unless it's like, like um. Also, it's like. That Patreon you joined, you got early builds. Yeah. Early. I I think it's an issue. Yeah. I don't think it should happen. I don't think people yeah. should be promoting this or getting, being paid to be able to do this. I, sh- I, I don't want to buy emulators. I don't want to pay. No, 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 no. Emulators should be yeah. free, sure. Yeah. I'm just saying the fact they're helping people get these games illegally, that's the big yeah. issue. Well, and that's they're getting what, paid for it. They're getting paid yeah, to help them get these games. And, like, Nintendo made a great point when they sued them. They said, hey, we probably lost out on like roughly, big roughly, a million dollars due to the the sales of uh, Tears of the Kingdom. Because that game leaked, I think it was two weeks before launch, uh-huh. and people were able to play it on these emulators. Those people, I have no doubt in my mind they did not purchase this game. Because why would they? They literally got to play it, and then when the game came out, they got updated, you know? For for uh-huh. for free, you know. Yeah. That's an issue. That should never happen. Nintendo, in my opinion, was completely in the right to go after these companies that were creating yeah. emulators, specifically for modern stuff. Well, they won the lawsuit, so obviously yeah. they were. No, the they right. didn't. It wasn't a lawsuit. They just settled. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. And then, but here's the statement they they made afterwards. Like I'm paraphrasing here, but it's like uh, Nintendo came after us. We are. Like we took it down, we are completely against pir- uh, piracy. Pinocchio knows gross. Yeah. Oh, yeah. If they were, then they wouldn't be promoting it in their own Patreon. Yeah. Like it's you, silly. Like, I, you're capping with this statement. Like we're against piracy. We know we were. We know to do the right thing and it take it down. It's probably part like, of their settlement to say yeah, something like that. It's like a lo- the lawyers told them, "Hey, write this." But that's where I stand on it. I think it's a complete joke that people think that this is okay. I think people that go, oh, yeah, screw the big company, screw Nintendo. They're the ones that are the bad guys because they're the big guys. No, they are not the bad guys here. Sure, Nintendo does a ton of terrible things and ruins a lot of hard work from many people. This time, no, they were definitely not the yeah. bad guys. They were in the right completely. Well, it's their own stuff. You're you're essentially stealing their stuff. You're bypassing them. Before it comes yeah, out. Before it even releases. Yeah. Yeah. Now, now we're not saying that Yuzu was the ones responsible. That was someone else. I don't know who leaked the Tears of the Kingdom but thing. I'm pretty sure you could have gone through their discords yes, and you, found oh, it. Oh, yeah, though. you could have. The sure fact that it was it. on their discords and like you could find it through their discords, they are, all, all, they are also a part of the problem. Yeah. I don't think they are faultless, which is why they got fined as much as they did when they Wasn't settled. Several million dollars. Something. And then, like, what was it? A year or two earlier, that dude that went to prison because he because yeah. of the similar stuff. People um, were mad at Nintendo for that about, too. The thing, the messed up thing about that is that, so he was part of a group, and he was just pretty much like a, a low end chain guy, the scapegoat and, essentially. Yeah, scapegoat, and yeah. because he because Nintendo couldn't get the other ones since they were in other countries, they slapped him with sure, the, and like, I don't know, that's pretty harsh. Like, for just to get random guy in that. Pretty much not random the, guy. He was yeah. also fault. He also did things like, that he should not have done. I know, like, but like, a, that's a lot of money to like. Sure. Yeah. How much money did the Nintendo lose? I don't think lose? it's right that Nintendo did that. That's my opinion. That's fair. That's yeah. a fair opinion. I disagree, but I think that's a fair opinion yeah. to have. Like yeah. that guy's pretty much gonna die in debt. I definitely so. see it as like, a, um, Nintendo <sighs> legally owns a white man. It's. <laughs> It's a uh, what's the word I'm looking for? They made a example. 
an example yeah. out of him. Out of him saying, listen, yeah. don't do this or this is the consequences. I wonder how many people are scared away. Well, it's just still, I, in my opinion, I think it's completely silly. They think that these people think they're going to get away with literally yeah. breaking the law. Right. And when they get, got, when they get caught, the people that broke the law are the good guys. That makes zero sense to me. Mm-hmm. How is that? That's completely ass backwards in my mind. I think that uh, people, especially consumers that um, get really upset about something like this, is put yourself It's a lot in, of, I'm pretty sure it's a lot of anti-corporate mentality. Sure. Yeah. And I think corporates are a big problem at times. But when they're in the right, you have to accept that too, I think. I mean, I agree. Yeah. Like, I, like I was saying is uh, people need to put themselves in the shoes of, let's say, said corporate company. Let's say that this is your company and you're you're losing this much, like X amount of dollars because people are bypassing you with your own product. I got it. You set up a lemonade stand, okay? Some guy sneaks up behind you while you're selling to a customer, reaches up on the counter, grabs some lemonade, runs over and gives it to his friends. Yeah. Yeah, and 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 makes money on top of that. And makes a couple couple dollars. <laughs> yeah. He's like, he's like, bro, I got the secret lemonade product. You want some of it? I got some two two weeks early. <laughs> imagine, imagine you're just some Indian guy running a Seven Eleven, then some punk teenagers steal candy bars. Well, you got to own the Seven yeah. Eleven. You can't just yeah. be working there because you don't give a crap if you're just working yeah. there. Well, you're you at that night. The you're the owner working the cash. Yeah, there you go. There you go. And then they just steal it. Yeah, you you want to go confront them? Yeah. You wanna, but the thing is, is like you steal from Walmart. Same you. things. You steal from anywhere. It's you're gonna it's get the same in thing. trouble. I it's just it baffles my mind that people think it's okay to do wrong things to big people. I wonder. If oh it's yeah, that that Indian at the Seven Eleven. Not the stealing part. The Indian at the Seven Eleven. That's actually true. I went to a Seven Eleven one time. And there's a guy playing Indian music, and I don't think he spoke a word of English. <laughs> I just put my stuff up there. He's like. Mm. And paid it, and then I didn't speak a single word of English to him. I wonder if it's because we are the last decade, anyway, probably since like what, what two thousand seven or eight. Basically, whenever Netflix became digital, and it, I guess with um, that generation of consoles, they started doing digital releases. I wonder if it's uh, just that whole transition from physical to digital that everybody forgets <laughs> that that's still, even though you're buying a digital. Uh, thing it's still a thing that can be stolen yeah. and you shouldn't do that you wouldn't download a car would you <laughs> see that's another thing too though is like this isn't new the companies have been advertising that all the freaking time with like i remember popping in vhs's and they talked about do the green screen mm-hmm. thing pops up do not pirate yeah, blah, yeah. Blah, 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 blah. like well, it's the age old thing. It doesn't let's, change. Let's slightly shift gears and let's talk about where Nintendo, in my opinion, is in the wrong for the stuff they've done. Things like shutting down fan projects. If the fan project is making zero dollars and yeah. it's one hundred percent for fan stuff. AM two R, baby. I think that's completely fine. So how do you feel about um fans giving away mods they made for modern games like Breath I dislike of the Wild. that. I mean like I don't I don't I th- love it. Honestly, I think if you buy a legal copy of Breath of the Wild and then run it in Yuzu and then mod it, that's fine. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, like you want to play as Minecraft Steve as it was like Link in a Minecraft Steve outfit. Yeah, that'd be awesome. I agree with that, yeah. but I think there's a caveat. I think that's the one where if Nintendo wants to, honestly, if Nintendo wants to get mad, it's in their legal right to get mad about any of this stuff. And I understand why they would, because it's all about protecting their IP. That's why Pokemon is one of the biggest things they go after for fan-created stuff. Um, a lot of the times, because this fan-created content becomes something that is sold later on, I don't know how many ROM hacks have literally been somehow stuffed into a cartridge that are sold at some conventions or online and stuff. Yeah. I even own one of those cartridges, for example. And so, like, Nintendo doesn't want that. They want to protect their IP. But at the same time, I also disagree with them shutting down fan products yeah. in general. Even um, if it's modern stuff and they're going through yeah. a somewhat legal method if they already own the game and so on. Right so on. now on itch.io, there's a Star Wars fan game. That's right. I said Star Wars, not anything else, about where you play as a stormtrooper crashed on Endor and the bunch of there's a bunch of dead stormtroopers and they become zombies. How I was like, okay, this is a cool idea. How long before Disney shuts this down? Yeah. 
Could be. Could be soon. Also, the cool fun fact I found is that uh, it's a real virus called Blackwing, I think, in the Star Wars canon. I was like, that's that's cool. But yeah, I'm pretty sure Star Wars, uh, Disney would shut it down soon if they caught wind of it. Which is in their complete right to do so. And sure, it can suck. But if, the, if a company wants to protect their IP, I think it's completely all right for them to. I don't think it's a great practice for fan relations, but I think if they want to, they can. That, Like I said, that's where yeah. I'm kind of more lenient as opposed to st- straight up theft. <laughs> well, yeah. it, it, let's be honest here. In all reality, taking the entire pool of gamers, I feel like it's a very small minority that really is upset about the simulation business. Most yeah. gamers are willing and happy to pay uh, for things that they like, especially Nintendo's brand yeah. new video games, even some of their older ones with like Nintendo Switch Online where they're porting it and bringing it, trying to make it accessible. I think what I really like um, about this emulation business, not talking about like the modern consoles and stuff, but you always hear people say, especially collectors, video game preservation. And I think with the transition that we're going through right now from um, physical digital to strictly digital in the future, I'm sure we'll see it in the next, I don't know, five to ten years where there won't be any physical media anymore. Maybe you can buy a box with the box art and the digital download code. Yeah. Um, But I love the idea of video game preservation. You'll probably just get those cards at Walmart instead of the, like, you know, they got the... The little the code card, cards. Little card stand, yeah. the code. It'll be that instead of a game wall. It's a code card wall. Oh man, those would be those would get stolen quickly. Unless well, they, they have to be the act- they have to be activated yeah. when you buy them. But see, at that point, it's like, why go to Walmart when I can literally just punch in my credit yeah. card? Sure. It's and more like, hey, little Jimmy likes this game. Let's get it for Christmas. It's more like a <laughs> gi- yeah, it's a gift. It's a gift thing. But also, like most people are probably have accounts, so they're probably just gonna gift it on Christmas. Like, here, champ, look at your account. There it is. Unless unless um, Grandma Susan doesn't quite get that stuff. She <laughs> oh, just knows yeah. Jimmy likes the little block characters. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she bought you V-Bucks instead of yeah. the game. <laughs> Yikes. Oof. <laughs> I could imagine the future Grandma Sh- Sue's kid for, not, for getting V-Bucks instead of Minecraft. The Grandma asked for V-Bucks for Christmas yeah. and she didn't get them. <laughs> She's on a rampage now. I think going back to this kind of wrap up this discussion, I guess, is I always hear people say there's a lot of nuances around it, which there are, but I still feel like there's a big black line drawn in the sand that everybody knows they shouldn't cross. And they freak out when people do and they trying to justify crossing that line. You're trying to justify illegal activity. And I, (laughs) I just can't in my brain. Like... I don't look at these See, people I, as I Robin like Hood. I look at them as like they're it's dangerous just doing territory Ill- illegal activities. It. It's very dangerous territory in doing it, and I did cross that line. But it's more the area that Nintendo is probably going to not have their drones be eyes on as much. They probably probably will if they peek their heads over it. If their drones peek their heads, over, I'm, I'm picturing it like it's a freaking sci-fi novel. But that's what it feels like. And it's like everybody does things, right? I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna be the one to call out blame and not show that I also have blame. Sometimes I go a little faster than the speed limit. You know, that's just one small um, thing. Everybody does things, and let's. I remember you got Call of Duty, the Black Ops. Yeah, games. yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I wanted to play Black yeah. Ops One and Two on the PC, so I just found them digitally online. But you could also throw that out there of, well, I own them physically. No, no, no. That is completely... I was completely in the wrong for doing this. Sure, but... I have easy methods to pay for them. I've seen people say that, though. Oh, yeah. They're wrong. I was in the wrong. I'm not trying to say I was in the right at all. I know what I was doing was wrong. (laughs) I just just didn't feel like I want to pay $60 Um, for a 13-year-old game. Sure. Another... another line we've crossed over is using cd key sites you're not buying them from the legit source so that one's weird um and you trick it like yeah they might have bought a cd key and then sold it like that's that's called they buy them on sale i don't know how it works dude i just know it is against terms of service to be doing that i think they have uh they probably have two accounts and they gift the account and the code has that account and they just copy that code and put it on the website 
I think that's how it does it. I have no idea. Because whenever you gift a game to your friend on Steam, at least, it's a code. And they put that code in and you get... Or they go and go into stores and just buy a bu- buy up a bunch of codes, put that on the website. That way... It could that literally be people get these code cards like Thane's talking. Yeah, code and cards. And they just work at Walmart and just scan a bunch of them and just walk out the store. Yikes. Um, going back to what you said, though, you said I didn't want to pay sixty bucks for a thirteen-year-old sure. game, just like the little Samson. Right. I'm the same yeah. way, and this is why I'm incredibly heartbroken that physical media is vanishing into the abyss. Because still, right now, I can get on eBay and look up old games, get them for five or ten bucks used, and get them, pop them in my consoles, and I can play. Sure. That is going away. Where we will have Call of Duty: Modern Warfare Three. In 15 years, still being sold for $60. Yeah, and on sale for maybe half that the price. Is, yeah. From what I've seen, that game is not worth $60. I'm saying the current Modern Warfare yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, that that's what he was saying. It's not worth, $60. not worth $60. It's barely worth the 45 I paid. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think I've put like... Probably 15 hours. In I will already. literally only put time into it because we've got our buddy who just asks every night to play. Just freaking shooting up, dude. <laughs> I, I watched a video on the campaign, dumbest campaign in Call of Duty ever. It's like, wow, like the writers were not thinking with Let's that. Let's be honest, though. Like, aside from, I guess, you saying how good the Cold War campaign Cold was. Cold War campaign's banging, dude. Modern Call of Duty campaigns are dookie. Yeah, well, they don't Modern care. Modern Warfare reboot, like the original 2019 Modern Warfare was a fun campaign, that too. That one was yeah. pretty fun. That one's banging as well. But on contrast, the Modern Warfare 3 campaign just didn't care. they just like, yeah, this happens. Let's write that. I think... Uh, they got hit with, uh, we're not going to do Crunch. yearly releases. Oh, just kidding. Just kidding. Make Crunch. a game. Yeah. Bust down with the Yeah, gavel. they said they promised. I don't know if they promised that, but they said that. It's like, oh, we're not going to do yearly releases. Well, what's a promise to a yeah. big corporate company? Yeah. And now we're going back to the companies being the bad now, guys, right? th- if yeah. And that's fair. I think this one's fair. Remember if, when that, we- if there's one thing to blame companies for is that. Remember when that th- sucks. 343 was like, oh, yeah, we're going to make sure that this new Halo is going to have couch co-op. <laughs> and then guess, and the kicker is like, we can't do couch co-op. The kicker, someone modded, someone found an ex. they didn't even no, mod it. It wasn't even a mod. It was they game. found an exploit in the code to do couch co-op. I think it didn't work properly, like 100%, but yeah, yeah, you're not wrong thing. It's like, very all, Yeah, and then they, someone probably could have modded it so it could work fully. I'll tell you guys my biggest problem with... Uh, big companies right now, specifically in the video game industry, because that's probably the Asper. one I consume the most. Asper. I'm fine with like what Nintendo's doing, protecting their IPs. I'm fine with companies doing that. Where I'm really upset is when they release half-ass products or half-baked for full price. Now Nintendo is the one that doesn't do that. Sure, right. And don't most you, of the time, don't you want to give Nintendo your money though? You're like, wow, guys, you made Tears yeah, of the Kingdom just- a fully functional. 100 plus hour game and you gave it to me for $70. Yeah. I, I would say what's half assed is the hardware. I don't, well, that's a little harsh. But like, what are you comparing it to? The Steam Deck. Steam Deck? Sure, but Steam Deck PS5. came out like seven, five, six years later. So Sure, but the Switch works fine. No, oh well, yeah, yeah. I'm just saying like that's what I'd compare Spec-wise, it to, but it's kind of a hard comparison because it did come out like five or six years later than the like, launch of the Switch. Yeah. yeah. Man, like, uh, but. That could change. Like, let's see what the Switch 2 has. I've always been, like, because I've watched lots of videos of people bitching and comparing about the, the Switch's hardware and, and how old it is. Um, I understand, but I still have played some incredible video games on the Switch, and I have a great time. It's just, a, like, it's just talent. Like, oh, hey, we got this to work with. Yeah, let's make it work. My biggest issue is not that the fact that the games I've played are bad. It's the fact that the games that I've played could be so much better if we had good hardware. Yeah. Uh, imagine Tears of the Kingdom at 60 frames with literally. shaders. You keep the Some same... RTX. You, RTX. you literally keep the same exact graphic style for every one of these games I've already released. They instantly perform two times better than what they currently do yeah and yes you could do things like yeah if you run, if stuff. you're running it off a switch emulator guess what here's a fun fact yuzu's not the only one you can run that at si- i've seen people run tears of kingdom at 60 frames yeah 
It's a definitely it's definitely a thing that's limited by the hardware, and it's very sad. I hope one feature Nintendo has is that they have some Switch games actually enhanced by the new technology. We've seen it done. PS5 does it. Xbox Series X does it. I'd love to see Nintendo do it. Maybe. I don't I, know. I think the ultimate nail in the coffin is just like every time Monolith Soft released Xenoblade Chronicles 1, 2, or 3 on a new console, every single time I will buy them right yeah. away without question. Xenoblade Trilogy. That way I can up, I play them updated oh, every single time with Imagine shaders. a remake on the of Xenoblade X on the new console. The open world run looks better. The it runs. Well, it looks phenomenal yeah. on the Wii U, surprisingly. So, like, that's even hard to... Yeah. I would like to see it at 60 FPS, though. Oh, yeah. 60 FPS, like, new textures. Monolith, just just let me give you more of my money, please. That's all I ask. See, what a good I think, what you, a good I think Monolith should run the company. pay for the stuff you want. I think Monolith should come in and be the head at R&D at Nintendo. Because they know what they're doing. Or maybe Nintendo needs to do a better job of, like... Teaching people, I guess that's not really their job, but you'd think that they would want developers to be able to know how to develop for their console. Well, their in-house development team is pretty dang solid too. Do they teach other companies? Mm. I don't know. Probably not. Like a game freak, they're freaking working with sticks and rocks over there. They're just their own. <laughs> they're building. They think they're bigger. <laughs> they think, oh, we're the money makers. It's like they are they the money are. makers. Yeah. Don't like, get me wrong. No, they that's, are the money makers. It's gone to their heads. Like, hey, we're the money makers. We could do whatever. No, I don't think it's gone to their head. My whole philosophy on this, I've already said it 100 times, is that Game Freak can't make games. It's set in stone. I do not think Game Freak can make solid video games. They just make good gameplay mechanics. They need some help. Like, (laughs) I've been getting more information on this. Here's here's a funny thing before that. Just you have Bandai Namco come in. They can make a solid Pokemon game. Oh, yeah, they sure did. With that could. little engine they made for those two Pokemon yep. spinoffs. They did Pokken, and then they did freaking yeah. new Pokemon Snap, and they look gorgeous. Yeah, it's like they made their own engine, and then Game Freak's like, yeah, we're just going to use like a, some old engine. Me. <laughs> well, it's just like you go back to the history of Game Freak, and it's just blatantly obvious that nothing has ever looked like it could or worked like it could. Look at freaking like Pokemon Emerald, which is the the latest release on the Game Boy Advance and compared to like Golden Sun. Golden Sun is night and day graphically. It's insane how good Golden Sun looks when you look at that pixel art compared yeah. to Ruby and Sapphire. Same Sapp- console, right? It's the same console. Ruby and Sapphire, well, heck, even black and white looks worse than freaking Golden Sun. And Golden Sun's a Game Boy Advance, and black and white's the, the latest of the DS that they made. When you said, sorry, when you said Golden Sun, I thought you were talking like Pokemon, uh, po- Pokemon Gold. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Yeah. Golden no, the Sun, game the Golden JRPG Sun. Yes, Gold. the JRPG well, Golden Sun. Correct. Yeah, like that game looks so good yeah. on the Game Boy Advanced. And, like, every Pokemon game has had issues. Generation 1, uh, everybody was freaking hacking, glitching the F out of that game until their, their files were crashed. Generation 2 was more of the same. Generation 3... While it ran really well, I already just talked about how ugly it looked comparatively. Generation 4 was the worst games ever. Literally, I think I think Diamond and Pearl are the worst Pokemon games created. But then they turned around with Pokemon Platinum, which is the same game, but it's 100 times better. Still slow. Still freaking slow compared to anything else on the DS. Like, they put freaking Chrono Trigger on the DS and it runs so much better. You and you get know, little cutscenes, too. Hey, you want to know a game that runs blazing fast? The World Ends With You. Yeah, that's it's a like, DS game, too, dude. I that put, I put like, it. 500 commands per second and the game runs fantastically. <laughs> and that BGM is bumping the whole time. And then you get to, like, the 3DS. You got Pokemon X and Y. Then, then, then by the time I finish it... Solid on it. <laughs> So here's the thing. I entered a Pokemon battle, battle, and at the same time, I'm doing a World Ends With You battle. By the time your Pokemon trainer throws out a ball, I'm done with the World Ends With You battle. It's insane, dude. It's so slow. And Game Freak's just bad at making video games. They just make phenomenal In fact, mechanics. fact, same company, Square Enix, they put, a full, they put two full 3D Kingdom Hearts games on there that ran at, like, at least 30 frames a second. I wonder how much... Oh, well, obviously, they have a third stake in it, but... I wonder if Nintendo could be like, hey, guys, do better, please. They don't need to. That's the issue. <sighs> yeah, I guess you're right. It's Until it's, they stop sell, until they start selling really bad, which is never going to happen. So here, here's happen. the thing. Here's the thing. And the reason why they get so much flack is just because of Scarlet and Violet. Um, like, Scarlet and Violet were obviously put out far before they should have been. 
but it's because of all of the, the delays and stuff, internal delays that they had, the COVID stuff, all of the stuff they had to go through. If they were able to stick to their normal release schedule, I'm pretty positive it would have ran fairly well without as many bugs and glitches as there was or and is still to this day. And ugly as sin? Or do you think it'd still be ugly? It would have been ugly as sin still. That's just Game Freak, though. Yeah. Um, the next Pokemon game, like uh, Generation 10, that's probably going to be, what, 2026? Yeah, 2026 will probably be Generation 10. I still remember that picture of a Gotta billion. let him finish talking. Sorry. I think Generation 10 will probably run well because it'll go through the development cycle. It may be ugly in some spots, just like they always are. There's going to be some weird, dumb game mechanics, and it's not going to look near as good as it could compared to other games on that console that it comes out on, because it'll probably be the Switch 2. But it'll be Pokemon. You know, it, nothing's going to change. Isn't they're going to supposed to be one more Pokemon game for Switch, and that's the... Pokemon Z to A. Yeah. I mean, they could do another one for Switch, but who knows? They, we just know of one. Maybe yeah. they'll do like a dual release if the new console comes out I this year. They Sorry could. to cut you off, but I remember I still remember that picture of Pokemon Arceus twenty twenty two, whatever year it was, and then Oblivion two thousand six. Like what the hell? Like Oh yeah. Obli- like it just showed a normal forest with like one a few trees back there. Oblivion had a whole blooming forest. It's sure. Like, what the hell? Pokemon is ugly. There are some moments when you're looking at Pokemon and you're like, wow, why is it so pretty? This is crazy. And the funny For the most part, they're ugly as sin, dude. They're so <laughs> gross. And the funny thing is, like, people called Oblivion ugly back then, and somehow it still looks better than Pokemon Arceus. I don't get it. When I played Scarlet and Violet with the homies, yeah, like you're saying, Cole, there are moments where you're like, wow, this looks gorgeous. And then you're looking, you're like, am I playing the N64? Like, look at these uh, trees. And the problem is with pictures like Thane's talking about is people take the worst for the best. Sure. So yeah, they take the yeah. best of Oblivion and the worst of Legends Arceus and just to, just to push their yeah. agenda, essentially. I'm not saying that Legends Arceus looks better than Oblivion. I couldn't even tell you what Oblivion looks like because I've it's, never played that freaking game. But... Uh, I, there's some spots in Legend Arceus that are gorgeous, in my yeah. opinion. I think it's very I'm pretty. I'm gonna say all times. Bethesda games don't look that good. You go into a cave, and Arceus looks like you're freaking looking at a surface that's just a flat wall duplicated a million times, and you can actually see the spots where the textures are duplicated. It's yeah. so bad. <laughs> you can see where they didn't they didn't seam it together. You can they see did it not seam nothing. So they literally had their texture artist come in for an afternoon and say, "Give us something for ten minutes," and they're like, "Okay." Didn't even think about it duplicating us to each other. It's yeah. crazy the bad. Thing, the thing about that is, like, it it doesn't just, just come down to graphics. It also comes down to art direction. I've seen games yeah. with lesser graphics. Correct. Be, uh, pull it off beautifully. I'm pretty sure Elden Ring, I don't know what graphics in. It's probably just an uh, internal graphics engine. It looks amazing. Well, no, I mean, like, yeah. I hate to be the guy that's beating the dead horse, but Xenoblade, you know, yeah, Xenoblade oh yeah, always Xenoblade. looks phenomenal because the art style and art direction is so Isn't good. That, for is the that console. also like a in company engine that they use? Yeah, I think yeah. it is. Like they, they know how to work it. Like every Nintendo does have in company engines. I don't. I don't know. I'm pretty sure there's a few games that run on real. Uh, I can't tell you off the top of my head what they are, but like, yeah, they. It's like. Certain companies just know how to work with what they've got. Game Freak doesn't have that. <laughs> well, they just never have that. They've yeah. never had that. That's they've the never issue. Never had that. It's a bunch of boomers running this company. Yeah. And when they get new people to show up, they teach them the old ways and they stick with the old ways because that's all they know. They have great ideas, though. These new people coming into this company have phenomenal ideas, and that's why we get phenomenal gameplay loops and gameplay mechanics. That's why Pokemon battling is one of the best. I honestly think that some of the best JRPG battling in all of all video games, because like we even see it have like a competitive scene, for example. It's so in depth. But man, their games are bad. Holy cow, their games are bad. Trust me, I know. I buy every single one of them like seventeen times for some. You're stupid part of reason. the problem. No, I know I am, but like. It wouldn't matter if I'm a part worry, of the problem you know, or not. They would be yeah. making these games good and bad regardless because they just don't know how to make yeah. games. And there's no reason for them to learn how to make them better because it still works. It's it's not like the next Pokemon game bombs, they're going to all of a sudden change their formula. That's not going to happen. They're going to keep their formula the same because that's what they know. They don't know anything else. I mean, I think that the core gameplay, sh- I-, I could change a little bit uh, as it does from what you've said from game to game, but it still says keeps the core. Just why not make it 
better, make it prettier, yeah. make it yeah. run better. Because they don't know how. That's what it comes down to. They just literally do not know how. They get some phenomenal artists. There's some really good artists at Game Freak, but when they got to com- when they got to <laughs> smash them together with the terrible uh, the game development, it just doesn't work as well. Like you should see some of the freaking um, art concept art for like Sword and Shield. Whew, it's cool looking, dude. It's sick. There have been several indie games that have been like one th- to three guys, and literally how they made it i don't know compared to like a bunch of old japanese men a, a multi a a uh several hundred development team like lethal company pizza tower oh if those are bad warning. video games though look at the one that, just the one that the one that you played all made by one guy where it was like there was they made one and then they think they made a second one i can't remember what it's called the shooter right memory right memory right memory made yeah, by yeah. one guy right? that's a that was a big asset flip though there's a lot yeah of he just yeah. bought a bunch of assets like on etsy oh, okay. or whatever yeah, it was like i mean <laughs> the guy the guy made he it playable. Stole some too oh, the no. guy made it playable yeah but, i guess that's different than creating stuff from scratch yeah but speaking of scratch, that's the end of the episode. Yeah. <laughs> scratch, scratch, scratch. Yeah. Scratch, scratch. <laughs> Did I get uh, the look up? Thank, thank you guys for listening to I will, our rant. I will, I will force these guys in the next two weeks to make an episode. Sorry about last week, but we're lazy. Uh, we hope you guys enjoyed the episode. Remember, Helldivers 2 is a terrible video game. I hope you guys have a great one. Keep it rad. Fuck you. <laughs>